if you had a family member or it was yourself or what advice would you give to somebody that gets that diagnosis? Like, like you said, good thing we caught it, we can get started next week, you know, you, that they get that advice. What advice would you get to somebody sitting in that chair that gets the diagnosis of cancer? Well, number one, you need to ask the physician the 10 questions, right? And you need to know what your potential outcomes are. I mean, is this therapy going to give me a 10% success rate, a 90% success rate? And when you're telling me it's 90%, what does that mean? That means I'm going to live for five years and I'm probably going to die from this cancer. You just need to get informed, right? Now, there are some types of cancer that MD therapeutics are not a bad idea for, but they're barbaric, like breast cancer. If you catch breast cancer early enough, the tumor that's there is specific to the tissue of the breast. It can't grow anywhere else. Now, if you catch it too late, it will metastasize and move somewhere else, and then you're screwed. But if you catch it soon enough and you hack the breasts off, well, you probably have a good chance of not dying from breast cancer. Which is like saying, well, holy smokes, there's an epidemic of hand psoriasis in the United States. So what are we going to do to stem that tide? We're going to amputate people's hands. Well, that's one way to do it. Hacking off the breasts, double radical mastectomies, that's one way to do it, but it's kind of barbaric, old-fashioned, outdated, and again, it misses the point completely. The tumor is not the disease, it's the result of the disease. What causes the disease? Medical science does not know this. And, and yet, so, right, we have a problem, we have a diagnosis, we're scared to death. We need to just get informed. So you need to ask your oncologist those questions. You need to see what their answers are. You need to ruminate with that and then decide on your own whether you think it's prudent to move forward with their recommendations. If you do, then God bless you and damn the torpedoes. If you don't, you're SOL. Because all that you have the, is the Internet. So now you have to go to the Internet and try to figure out how to cure your own cancer. Good luck. All you'll have is anecdotal evidence from this clinic here or that clinic there or this doctor, who knows what, who knows where, right? And again, just like with the food allergy question, in a perfect world, the research would have been done to answer those questions years ago. In a perfect scientific objective community, not driven or controlled by pharmaceutical interests or, you know, agribusiness interests, if it was really pure science for science's sake, we'd have a clue because we would abandon the reductionistic methodology because it simply doesn't work. It doesn't work. And we would have adopted a holistic methodology in our attempts to discover the causative nature of cancer and what to do to fix it. But right now, People are SOL. However, my colleague, Dr. Wallach, sued the Food and Drug Administration a number of years ago to secure something called a qualified health claim. Now, to get a qualified health claim, you have to bring boatloads of medical research to the Food and Drug Administration to support whatever it is that you're attempting to say. You have to have mountains of clinical research to support your claim for health. Dr. Wallach was able to do that. He sued the Food and Drug Administration successfully so that we can say in a public forum, supplementation with the mineral selenium at 200 micrograms a day reduces the occurrence of breast cancer by 82 percent, reduces the occurrence of lung cancer uh, even if you're a smoker, uh, by 30%, I believe, reduces the occurrence of colon cancer by 50-something percent, reduces the occurrence of prostate cancer by 60-something percent. So there is so much clinical evidence to support the notion that selenium helps you not to get cancer, and it's one mineral out of the 90 essential nutrients that you need. Inquiring minds want to know, number one, why don't the Susan G. Komen women know that? Why aren't they marching for selenium supplementation? Because you know what that means? If every girl in this country took one selenium capsule from the time of birth, uh, 
through their life, in one generation, we'd eliminate breast cancer by 82%. Why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we doing that? Because we don't have a free medical market, and the people that we trust to take care of our health are wedded to a reductionistic methodology that is not concerned with the cure. And it's a problem. So if I was trying to support and promote the structure and function of my body in the face of a diagnosis of cancer, which is separate and distinct from trying to treat cancer, I would take the full complement of the 90 essential nutrients. I'd completely eliminate, we've discovered 10 foods that are bad for you, wheat, barley, rye, and oats, oil in a bottle, fried food, there's four others. You can get that list for free on my website. I eliminate all those foods. I would consume 100,000 ORAC points of antioxidants a day. Uh, and I would take uh, a lot of selenium into my body every day. Uh, plus an interesting sea vegetable called fucoidin. There are over 1,100 published studies on fucoidin and its biological activity. One of the things that fucoidin does is it increases something called apoptosis which is the death of cancer cells. So if I was trying to support my body's ability to increase its structure and function, to optimize its health in the presence of a diagnosis for cancer, I would eat as much of that stuff as I possibly could. The 90 essential nutrients, selenium, and complete abstinence. I mean, man, I wouldn't even be downwind of fried food. No kidding. But see, the problem here is all we have to go on in the realm of cancer is anecdotal evidence because the medical market is controlled. And the research that's being done, that needs to be done on this, isn't being done, and it's the MD's fault. It's got to be somebody's fault. They know that it doesn't work. They're not making noise. They're still propping up a dead horse. They are. And it's a problem. Honest to God, if every cancer patient simply asked their oncologist these 10 questions, everything would change.